Welcome back, Blue Stable fans. My name is Destin Adams. I am the CEO and co-owner of the Blue Stable, and you guys know me and hear me on the Blue Stable podcast, the official Colts podcast of Fan Sided. This is a little bit different today. This isn't a normal episode of the Blue Stable. This is a special project we've been cooking up for you fans called Hashtag Go 30 with the NFL's special team tackle leader last year and all pro, George Odom. George, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Dustin. Uh, really excited for the season coming up. You know, when everything happened last year, I'm just ready to stack the seasons and get get it rolling. A for sure. I mean, hey, there's not much you could have did better on the special team side of things last year, leading the NFL in solo special teams tackles with 13 and leading the NFL in total special teams tackles with 20. Um, and just to make it even more impressive, no one else even had more than 16 last year. But, I mean, a lot to build on there to move on to another successful season, but we're so excited that you've decided to be willing to answer some fan questions with us and partner with the blue stable. Super excited for this upcoming season. Um, but super excited that you're willing to come on with me today. Okay. Thank you. Well, I really want to appreciate you inviting me over. I guess we can go ahead and get the thing started. Hey, anytime. But yeah, first question that we had come come up that we really thought was interesting was, how has your training and season preparation changed since coming into the league? Well, uh, in college, you know, you can just do whatever. And then the last week or two, they, you could just go ahead and get back in shape, run with your friends and do that. But now in the NFL, you got to really know your body, you know, what, what do you need to work on? What do you need to strengthen? What do you what do you need to actually do to help your mobility and long longevity in the NFL? So I guess uh, just knowing more of your body and then longer duration of training and more intensity. I guess that is the truth. I guess over the past few years, I learned that from my rookie year, I only – Training for about what, like three weeks before training camp, stuff like that. Uh, the year before, I trained probably a month, and now this this past season, I trained for longer than six weeks. So, I guess that's a difference. It would be great to take a longer. Yeah. Um, I mean, what I do for a living, um, I work from home, so not as much preparation has to go into that for sure. Um, especially the game that you play and the stress that it puts on your body. So, I mean, I can't imagine having to do what you do day in and day out to be game ready. But so the next question that we had come through um, was what was your welcome to the NFL moment? Oh, OK. So back in 2018 made it uh, to the playoffs. We were playing the Texans, and uh, the crowd was going crazy. This before the even kickoff. So we did the whatever, the national anthem. And then, then uh, when we lined up for kickoff, you know what I'm saying, I'm the, I'm the leader on the special team, so I'm like, all right, ready to break. And then we lined up, and all the thing you see is everybody waving the white flag, shaking it in the air. I'm like, oh, my God, this is crazy. And that was my moment, like, oh, my God, it really opened my eyes up, like, oh, yeah, this is the NFL. We got to – hey, we're going we to run and hit. <laughs> hey, and we and we basically ran the Texans off the field that game, too, if we're going to run it back to 2018. And ran, ran them off the field in Houston in their own building, really. Uh, but big playoff win. But, yeah, that, that, that is super cool, cool NFL moment to remember. The next question that we had come through is how is it working with Coach Eberflus and Coach Vitrone? Um, how are they similar? How are they different? How do you balance having to really work that closely with two head coach, like two coaches in that environment? Uh, Flus, he's a uh, he's way different from Vitrone. They're like they're nowhere near the same type of person. Vitrone, he's like really up tempo, aggressive when he like he's not. A, Aggressive when you talk 
to you, but he's like aggressive in that manner. Like he felt he still had the mentality that he's still a player. So he wants to push us even harder and harder and harder. He refluce, he go by flus. He's a he's a special type of person. Like he thinks about a lot of stuff. Like he thinks about it and then he goes over it and he wanna practice it over and over and over for repetition and repetition. Cause when you do it over, say say this. He taught us this, say if a man trains and kicks, say say if one man has a thousand kicks, are you afraid of him or are you afraid of the man that trains trains with one special kick? You know, that's that's the thing about flu. So you try to train train for one thing over and over to make us great. And so we have to think about it. I guess that's the difference between the two. Hey, and I mean not many people have to work that closely. Um, with two a defensive coordinator and a special teams coach like you're having to, and especially when they're that different, I bet that's really a really interesting thing to approach um, every day in practice. The next yeah, question, that's... the next question that came through for us was, what teammate, former or current, has had the biggest impact on your game as a whole? Um, well, it's several people that taught me a lot of things. Uh, I know Mike Mitch, he uh, really just had me lock in the focus and study and stuff. And then Kenny Moore, he he's really the dominant player that you think he is. Um, it's you know, over the over the years I've learned to study film and evaluate myself in a manner of how the coaches wanted me to play and how how I should actually perform. So it's it's a total team effort, you know, with those types of things. And now now the biggest question is, has Kenny Moore taught you um, some of his sack celebration dances? Um, do, do you think you could outperform Kenny on the field with a sack um, dance afterwards? I don't know. You know, Kenny got them little loose legs. So. <laughs> he, he's pretty uh, – he's a special person. I love Kenny at Death Hour. I record him once a year on his uh, on a video. Hey, we're we're gonna have I, to. We're, we're gonna. I, got, I, think I, I think I got something for the, for y'all this year. All right. Hey, I'm gonna be expecting. I I'm gonna have to put a side by side video at some point when we see a celebration dance from George Odom this year. Um, this next one is a topic that we actually had on our podcast a few weeks ago during the off season. A little bit of a slow time period podcast wise. So we we went through and we actually drafted Colts players in a five on five basketball draft. So if you had to form the best five starting basketball lineup out of this Colts locker room this season. Who would it be and why? Okay, uh, I'm going to start off with Mo Ali Cox. You know, he was already a basketball star. And he, this past uh, offseason, he was over there hooping with Chris Brown. Then, you know, I'm going to start off my boy, Corey Willis, hoop star. It might be uh, – I'm not sure about Darius. He, he's a basketball player, but I don't know if he – quick enough on the field, you know, on that on that court, you know. I'm going to say Zach Pascal. Boom, Zach. I'm going to say T.Y., he's a shooter, and then, you know, myself. I was going to say, you had to include yourself. But believe it or not, one of our hosts had the very first pick of the draft and didn't take Moali Cox. Whoa, whoa, he's out of his mind. I that that's what that's what we tried to tell him. I was like, this man was D one at VCU, and you're not going to take him number one overall. If you ever look up, Mo say no. That's why I'm picking him. He beating everybody's stuff coming in. Hey, a hundred percent. You don't got to tell me. I, I I remember watching him at VCU before he was even on the Colts' radar. Um, then when he, when he ended up coming to the Colts, I mean, you just saw the athleticism transfer over, but. Hey, guys, this has been hashtag Go30, G-O-30 with George Odom helping out the Blue Stable, answering your questions. We're going to do this a few more times in the next coming weeks. George is going to is one to answer your guys' questions. So we're posting on Twitter. We're posting on Facebook. We're posting on Instagram. Make sure to tweet, comment with hashtag Go30. 
tag the blue stable and put your question in. George wants to answer it. We want to ask it. Um, we want we want to see how personal we can get with George. I mean, I asked about his dancing skills today, guys. Like how how more how we can't get much per, more personal than that. But George, thanks again uh, for doing this. This is just episode one. Super excited to to go through this with you. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. Well, you guys have been listening to the Blue Stable podcast, hashtag Go30, the official Colts podcast of Fansided, and have a great rest of your week.